Haiti, a nation that was destroyed after the earthquake in January, and is the poorest country of the region. The issue is not so much in obtaining humanitarian help and money, because fortunately the international community has shown its solidarity, and we will speak about this, uh, having specific updates on what really has happened with that help. But now we focus our attention on how to assist that nation as the international community through the states, through the private sector, recognizing an enormous social responsibility in assisting this process of growth and, of course, of assistance in the reconstruction on the short and medium term basis for AT. Our thanks to our panelists. It's an honor to have you here with us. And I would like to start with the President of the Dominican Republic, Mr. Fernandez, who has had a fundamental role in this role. You have been considered as a great leader and facilitator, amongst other things because very little is understood the difficult situation that you have had being a neighbor, being a brother nation, that you share the same island in a sense, and that you have uh, felt the problem very closely. I would like to ask you, Mr. President, uh, your reflections as to what this immediate uh, solution in uh, the fact of what happened uh, on basis of this humanitarian basis, on this short-term basis, and what is the present panorama. Thank you very much for your very kind words. I believe that the case of Haiti brings us to reflect uh, as to the fragility of the human condition. Everything that took place in Haiti happened in barely 35 seconds. And in 35 seconds, 250,000 people lost their lives. In 35 seconds, 1 million people were left homeless. In 35 seconds, 120% of the GDP of Haiti collapsed. So I think that when one meditates on these matters of what happened in 35 seconds, we find a human tragedy of epic proportions. And of course, this required an immediate assistance on part of the people there to be able to take care of this element. As uh, in both, and we, we share the same uh, island, uh, Hispaniola, it was logical and relative that an uh, act of a common cause, we should be the first country to be present. The next day, that is 13th of January, there was Dominican presence on the Haitian side. That presence was established through a solidarity and common cause with uh, medication, with medicines, with food, with drinking water, with heavy machinery to be able to remove uh, all of the destroyed, uh, the rescue of body and uh, wounded people who were sent to Dominican Republic hospitals. Evidently, I was there personally directing this in the first 24 hours of this uh, event. And the panorama that we have is something that was awesome. Uh, we saw the president, uh, communications had collapsed. The presidential palace in Port-au-Prince had succumbed, uh, and therefore the court of justice, the venue of parliament, the main church, uh, cultural centers, universities, 90% of the physical infrastructure had collapsed, uh, 1,200 schools had disappeared. So this is a situation of such a magnitude, of such dimensions. We've never been, lived this except in 35 seconds. So there was an immediate response. The world became solidary with uh, Haiti. It came from all the place. Uh, we had uh, a great deal of help uh, with Haiti, multilateral organizations, Luis Alberto Moreno of IDB was there, the World Bank, all the world uh, was there, the United Nations uh, had also a catastrophe in large part of its personnel, the people who were heading the MINUSTA, which is the national movement of the United Nations in, uh, in uh, security, safety, died at that tragedy. So these were really the initial moments. Of course, at this time, we must uh, start to think in the second stage that deals with the recovery the reconstruction and coming back to sustained economic growth in Haiti. 
And on this, we've had several meetings. The first one was in Santo Domingo, a second one in Montreal with a group, and the third one has recently been in New York. And we will be present at the summit, Europe, Latin America, Caribbean in May, and we will conclude in Santo Domingo on June 2 with a world conference as to the future of Haiti, where we will have specific initiatives, projects, and plans how to finance in a 10-year term the recovery and the reconstruction of Haiti. Precisely on this point, I would like to ask Luis Alberto Moreno, President of the Inter-American Development Bank. Dr. Moreno, could you please also comment as a leader of this region that you have uh, had to somehow organize how these resources are going to be channeled and carry out this reconstruction process for Haiti. How does this integration process go in the different levels? And which would be for you the conclusions of the recent conference that was held some weeks ago in New York? Well, I think that uh, President Fernandez has made a very excellent summary of the challenges of Haiti, what the disaster means, uh, what Haiti faced. But I think there's also another issue that we must uh, recognize, uh, Mr. Fernandez, how he, as president, and his government reacted. I've always known from his uh, personal concern for Haiti, but there were historical tensions, and there are many sociological studies, that when there is a situation of this type of natural disasters, people are willing to overcome things and watch things from a different focus. I think that thanks to the leadership of President Fernandez, today those differences that existed in the past between Haiti and Dominican Republic have become a great strength, and this speaks well of his leadership and his government. The second part of this is that, as was said by the President, the costs of reconstructing Haiti represent approximately 120 percent of the GDP of Haiti, which is what has, what has been done till date. Basically, gathering all of the experiences that were used in other nations, and specifically one of the very successful ones in Colombia for the case of the Fore, and another part in Asia, in Indonesia, where also with the tsunami there was another very interesting experience. How is this going to work? On the way, several donors have established a fund and they will contribute resources and an agency, a development agency, that will have a council with uh, President Clinton as the representative of the United Nations and the First Minister of Haiti. And then we will have a technical group that basically has the responsibility of, in addition to being represented, as should be the case, by persons from Haiti, it must establish the way in which the sequence will take forth for the various projects that will help us to reconfigure Haiti. We know that uh, the first resources that were made available last week in New York are in the neighborhood of maybe five billion dollars. We cannot spend them all at the same time. If we, we do so, not only the problem of the capacity of absorption of the country, but that we would be uh, generating a Dutch disease. Uh, so we see that one of the problems are the very high transaction costs, amongst other things, because another fundamental subject is to begin to strengthen the government of Haiti. If this reconfiguration process does not uh, conclude, and this is something for many years, in strengthening government, we will not have achieved anything. So we must learn of the lessons of the past of how to help Haiti. On the other hand, there are about 7,000 NGOs in Haiti. We have been making a study to determine the number of NGOs that are working there, but in the measure that these are active, in the measure that 80% of education is private, not knowing what type of quality uh, per country with $400 uh, dollars per capita income and the cost of $120. So nobody knows what is the nature of education. So there's a great opportunity of starting a completely new level of education, what President Fernandez was mentioning. So this is one of the great challenges for the international community that is going to require a great deal of collaboration and, above all, the multiple emergencies and needs that Haiti has in this reconfiguration process. 
I would now like to present to you Father Joseph Philippe, who is the founder of Okosi in Haiti. He can provide us with a perspective from the site uh, and where they have suffered during these very harsh weeks and painful. Thank you very much for accompanying us, Father. I would like to ask you. Question would be these microcredit programs, for example. What is the approach that you will give this to transform people from the poor life? What are the characteristics of the Haitian people? Characteristics of, of the Haitian people. What would you say, since you have had experience with microfinance and other sectors and working to try to transform the people of, of poor, poor people life? Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. President Fernandez and Mr. Moreno for your good summary and uh, your advocacy in favor of Haiti. I would like to say that here, I mainly represent uh, the grassroots organizations in Haiti, uh, contrary to the IMF, uh, MFI section. And uh, uh, you need to realize uh, first, uh, Haiti, is the mother of freedom, la madre de la libertad en el mundo. And Haiti has been uh, disregarded because of its fight against uh, slavery in the 19th century, which was the main business. But uh, Haiti has been hit by this earthquake. For us, it's like the beginning of a new humanity, the beginning of a new creation in Haiti. And we are very thankful to uh, the panelists who are here for their solidarity with us, for the hospitality of uh, the Colombian people, the Colombian uh, president, and uh, the uh, uh, Schwab Foundation for mm -hmm. having us here. Myself, I am uh, the founder of uh, a peasant organization called APF, the Association of the Peasant of Fondois. And we have a DVD available online for this organization. It's Fondois, F-O-N-D-W-A.org. And also this organization has a website, APFHAT.org. Two things I want to share with you. The first one is how to rebuild Haiti from the bottom up to the top today after the earthquake. How to rebuild Haiti from uh, the bottom up to the top. Uh, we need to look at uh, the spirit of uh, this uh, rebuilding up the country. And as we said, uh, we, we have uh, 570 rural communities in Haiti. They have been excluded even by the Haitian government. Uh, they don't have uh, services from the government in Haiti. And uh, if we have to rebuild Haiti now, uh, we have to take into account the democratic principles, the Christian values, and good governance. And now, uh, since uh, this morning and uh, yesterday, we have been talking a lot about uh, public and private partnership. I want to share with you how we see that in Haiti. And uh, for us, public and pri private partnership should start from the bottom. Like in Haiti is a well-organized uh, country. We have a lot of peasant organizations. We have a lot of uh, youth movement. We have a lot of uh, women organization. And as you, we will say it later, Foncose uh, is in touch with uh, 200,000 uh, people all over the country as a national organization. And uh, to talk about public and private partnership uh, from the bottom up of Haiti, we're talking about uh, the local organization. Pri private for us, it's all of the local organizations uh, which can uh, develop a kind of platform among themselves. And then uh, we have the elected officers. Uh, we call them AZEK, A-Z-E-K, Kazek. K A Z E K, they are elected like the president is elected in the country. But most of the times they are elected, they are not given any financial means to participate in the, in the, uh, to respond to the needs of their people. 
And uh, in those communities, we have specialists, development specialists working in those communities. And we want, in the process of rebuilding up the country, for those three categories to be uh, represented. And uh, in 2008, we organized, for the first time, the Peasant National Congress in Haiti. And uh, the main request was to ask the government to create a ministry for peasant affairs, which will provide basic services to people living in the countryside uh, of Haiti. And uh, that means uh, the same uh, unit we have at the uh, community level, we should have the same thing at uh, the city level, at uh, the departmental level, and at the national level. This is a way to make sure that uh, public and private alliances work together. And also for the international community which wants to help, uh, we think that uh, a, um, Father. We, we think that uh, the organizations, um, uh, they, uh, the local organizations, they, they should be included in the management of the money, uh, of the money given to Haiti. Now coming back to your question. Yes, yes Father. Mm -hmm. For us, uh, a microfinance a, uh, is a means uh, to empower economically the people, especially the organized people. As we said earlier, uh, Haiti is a well-organized uh, country, but uh, very soon, a, uh, 16 years ago, we realized that economy is uh, the one uh, which uh, wins the political power. And in Haiti, it happens that uh, the wealth of the country was in the hands of a few families. And that, like this morning, we were talking about uh, a equality, yes. you know, access uh, to services uh, for the poor. But for us, uh, talking about uh, building up a democracy, we have to, fa to, to, to think about uh, financial rights of the poor. How can the poor get access to financial services? And also, as uh, the Fine. director of uh, Franco said it um, earlier in her presentation uh, this morning, Mrs. Uh, Anne Hasting, uh, we cannot, uh, a, uh, with microfinance, it's not enough to solve yes. the problem of Father, the Father, let me, let me go back with you in a couple of minutes to talk about other possible formulas, exactly, to try to transform poor people's lives. I would like to go now with uh, Prime Minister of Barbados. Mr. David John Howard Thompson. And I would like to ask you since, uh, well, you are speaking exactly from the richest and one of the most prosperous islands of the Caribbean. What is the look you have towards the Haiti case, the poorest island and besides devastated by this earthquake? Uh, what is exactly the way how you see, uh, is it possible to find a way for reconstruction and for in long-term uh, growth for Haiti? Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Um, this is one of the issues on which we have been agonizing. And when I say we, I refer to CARICOM. Haiti is a member of CARICOM. Uh, we consider it to be a very important member, uh, not only from the historical perspective, uh, mm -hmm. as was just mentioned, and we consider that to be uh, critical, but also in the sense that it has a large population and we think that uh, there must be some way in which we can seek to better integrate uh, Haiti into our region. Um, but this is also a Herculean task because obviously the economy has collapsed in the several meetings that I've attended. I went to the one in Dominican Republic, uh, in which the president did an excellent job in those early stages of identifying the needs at that point. Uh, even before the catastrophe, the IADB held a very important um, meeting uh, in Port-au-Prince on, uh, in, I think, during your 50th anniversary, in which we looked at the needs, and then subsequent to that, at the recent meeting in Cancun, and, and on four occasions. On each occasion, the immediate needs had changed. Mm -hmm. uh, that may say to us, uh, that there is a need on the ground for us to rebuild the governance structures in Haiti and to have a, a three-stage plan for its redevelopment that is consistent with what the people of Haiti want, but is also consistent with 
how the resources are going to be applied. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the meetings, when we meet as a group in CARICOM, uh, despite our pledges, despite the gravity of our concern and so on, despite the mobilizing of resources, yes. the critical issue is what can we do to ensure that the capacity is there uh, to deliver. Uh, one of the meetings we went to recently, and I mean the administrative capacity, one of the meetings that we went to uh, recently, uh, the issue was raised about how the physical development will take place because obviously we're not simply rebuilding what was there at the time of the catastrophe, but as I understood the desire of the government, they wanted to see a shift in the population out of the city, and they wanted to do some other kinds of yes. social engineering, mm -hmm. uh, which is, again, a very significant uh, task. Uh, so we've applied ourselves to that exercise by offering, for example, a core of retired public officers who've had experience, uh, and by offering other kinds of supports which would assist in the process. Mm -hmm. And we think this is one of the best ways in which we can help Haiti uh, through this exercise. Ahora vamos, sería interesante también conocer así como dos muy altos representantes, por supuesto, de estados de la región. Vale la pena ahora tener la mirada desde el sector privado. ¿Qué dicen las empresas? ¿Cuál es su compromiso, su responsabilidad social frente al tema? ¿Y es posible o no es posible a través de las empresas justamente buscar una salida para la reconstrucción y también eh, nuevamente pues, el, el mejorar el futuro de la, de la ciudad, de, del país, perdóneme, de Haití? Eh, quiero saludar al señor José Octavio Reyes, él es el presidente de Latin American Group, la compañía Coca-Cola México. Doctor Reyes, ¿cuál es exactamente el compromiso de Coca-Cola frente al caso de Haití? que están ustedes trabajando allí? Entendemos que tienen un proyecto con miras a cerca de 25 mil familias en Haití. Sí. Eh, yo, yo, yo pienso que eh, el sector privado tendría tres grandes avenidas, tres grandes compromisos. El primero es cumplir su labor como empresa, el, el invertir en su negocio como tal, el, el crear empleos, el continuar con toda, con toda la fuerza en su actividad eh, particular. Y creo que en ese caso el en Haití eh, eh, lo hemos hecho y lo continuaremos haciendo. Nuestro, nuestro sistema ya es el mayor empleador eh, de, del país en el sector privado. Este año en particular las inversiones continuarán adelante. 16 millones de dólares es lo que está planeado invertirse en el 2010 por nuestra, nuestro sistema en Haití. Ese es un área. Luego hay otra área a la que se refería eh, algunos de mis compañeros panelistas, el, el momento del desastre, el momento en sí de, 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 de que algo como that, uh, something as terrible this would happen and momento, what can you do at that time? And I think that in that sense we have also participated not uh, only with donations to the Red Cross, but uh, very importantly with uh, donations in uh, raw materials in water, especially coming from uh, Dominican Republic, which was the place where we could do so, and our system dedicated full production of uh, stage, uh, the production exclusively bottling water to be able to send it to Haiti. But a disaster of this magnitude that uh, brings about the cosas se pueden hacer eh, más allá de tu ámbito natural de, de, de responsabilidad. Y en ese sentido es que estamos muy, muy orgullosos y muy contentos de formar parte de un proyecto que se llama Haiti Hope, que es una coalición de hecho de, de eh, empresa a company, in our case, of uh, organizations such as the Inter-American Development Bank, organizations, non-governmental organizations of the Haitian government, no doubt, to try to create a sustainable industry for bottling uh, mango juice in Haiti. Our first objective is to be able to obtain in the coming five years to be able to have these 25,000 families, as you had mentioned in the beginning, that these 25,000 families during these five years 
the objective would be to double their income and therefore improve their quality of life. This is a project that uh, includes in a certain uh, joint way, not only private enterprise, but all other organizations, which are, for example, the IDB. And I think that basically this is the way that we can do it. I think that alone or separately, no sector could achieve anything. I would now like to greet uh, Mr. Lorenzo Endosa. He's the chief executive officer of Polar Enterprises from Venezuela. We're speaking about a global company, but has its roots in Latin America. Which would be your vision, Mr. Mendoza, regarding this commitment as such of the private companies? We are speaking of a Latin American private companies in this reconstruction. Well, thank you very much. First, uh, what we must say is that Haiti in some way comes to the world map on 12th of January. As a matter of fact, it is a country where 40% of its population under 15 years of age, where 50% of the children less than 15 years do not know how to read or write, where 54% of the children of the families live with less than a dollar a day, 80% with less than two dollars a day. So they are on the below the line of poverty where half of the people do not have access to education, where half of people do not have access to drinking water. So there are a series of factors that in AT were prior to this disaster, the tremendous disaster, such as the case of the January 12 earthquake. I'll begin by here because one of the things that I think is very important to have this vision in Latin America is to have that Haiti is part of our continent. It is very close to our history. And the reality is that we have been very timid in understanding this reality or worrying about that. Recently, there has been a overwhelming commitment uh, regarding AT. It's really impressive how Latin American countries have all turned towards AT after the earthquake. Uh, NG private companies and channel politicians in somehow or other with perhaps some uh, exceptions because we must always keep that in mind, but in diplomatic terms on a multilateral basis. But somehow I understand that this is after uh, 12th January that this uh, comes to be true. From private enterprise, there are elementary things. Uh, when we have an economy such as Haiti, where in agricultural terms they are being used, where their main contributions to the GDP is uh, of uh, agricultural activity and there's no investment or employment, this must be the main focus for development. If there is no, in, no progress, there's no opportunities. One of the elementary processes that must take place uh, to eliminate uh, tariffs and barriers, uh, customs barriers that may exist, should be erased uh, fully and have the political will and somehow open up the matter of the denomination of origin of the countries, the rules of origin be clarified and we should have a meeting that should not take a great deal of time uh, on the basis of a very serious situation. And this allows us to be able to deal immediately with certain elements that will bring a, a prosperous investment. I share what the father was mentioning that for the effects of building an alliance, uh, private sector, public sector, with a country, we need to work uh, from the grassroots up. And I would say that the essential part uh, uh, is that private enterprise should be present there. These challenges that were set for it, uh, President Preval said it requires $3.9 billion for the initial phase in the next first two years. At the recent conference in New York, the data were $5.3 million on the first for three, three years and over $10 million in the next years. Private enterprise has been a strong contributor to reach these uh, figures. We're not speaking only of governments, of the most important elements, the European community, United States, Brazil and our continent, plus all Latin American countries have provided uh, a co-responsibility in accordance with their size and capacity. But private enterprise has been very active in this process and has seen an investment process towards the fund that's being established. And the second contribution of the private enterprise will be administered by the World Bank, should have at that uh, board people from private sector that somehow will not have any sort of commitments 
in the sense of having specific interests of what will be with the assignment of those funds and sort of a very clear oath on part of the companies participating on this or the CEOs that are working there willing to donate our time and interest that to channel these resources in an optimum manner I think resources must start to flow and I think the conference is what is happening in Haiti our past and now we must work on how instead of the where if resources do not flow Haiti is simply going to become a much greater problem for humanity and a disaster for the com continent as a lack of action. The commitment of providing the resources, and I was talking with Les Alberto, the capacity that IDB has, the operational capacity to carry this forth is now being present. But private enterprise must invest, and investing with alternatives with the local government to establish the necessary conditions for this to take place so that there is a, the legal security, the rule of law. I don't think we can see Haiti as a sort of return business area. I think that the companies are in the continent must uh, consider this as a human commitment and many of the things and I fully coincide that the relations of employment is one of the most important ones that we have to develop but it's not the only one that we have. If somehow we believe that this is the only path to help the development of our countries unfortunately in Haiti this is not going to work because which came first the chicken or the egg uh, I think the first we have to direct investments towards the sectors where Haiti has real possibilities if you take these uh, trade barriers and somehow have these rules of origin of the country and open it up for it, we'll begin to have this. I feel very enthusiastic with the new relations in Haiti with President Clinton. We spoke of this in Davos and uh, we've all seen the participation of uh, WEF, the Young Leaders Group, where we have a series of very important uh, initiatives for Haiti and we can comment on these later. Thank you. I would now like to ask uh, the President of the Dominican Republic, uh, how do you see this position of Mr. Mondes about this uh, political will that is required to be able to stimulate investment uh, in Haiti, the reaction vis-a-vis uh, -vis this? What is your point of view on this matter, sir? I'm, I'm sorry. I think we are having uh, basically problems, of sound problems. Could you please comment uh, with reference to the position that Mr. Mendoza has mentioned, the need of having the political will as such and to stimulate investment as a possible dream in Haiti? No doubt. I think the private role Lorenzo was uh, saying uh, that uh, we have to do something to bring investment and then we go into one of the aspects that has been put forward which is the, the rehab and the recovery of Haiti not only in terms of the physical infrastructure it also has to do with governance uh, with the creation of a rule of law and uh, a transparent system that uh, uh, will be trustworthy, that will inspire confidence, uh, because uh, the progress for the future cannot uh, depend only on donations, aid, cooperation, or solidarity that could come from outside. A country itself needs to be viable, and in order for it to be viable, it needs to have institutions, it needs uh, to have uh, a reliable leader, a system for social and economic development, uh, a system for uh, scientific development, and it is the combination of all of these factors which will attract a private investment or will attract public and private alliances that we will allow the country to have sustainable development in the middle and short term. I think that uh, the Haitian authorities are very aware of what we're seeing here. And we have designed a development long-term plan which embraces all of these aspects. It talks about institutional strengthening in Haiti in order to be able to provide all of the inputs that the private sector needs and to be able to carry forward all of the investments. Investments have to be multifaceted. Of course, we have private investment for the physical infrastructure of the country. We need to build roads, uh, 
bridges, uh, schools, hospitals, uh, uh, public buildings, uh, all this needs uh, investment by the private sector, but then we need to provide services. Uh, uh, we need uh, food industries. We need all kinds of companies, uh, and uh, they will have to work in Haiti to aid in the reconstruction process. Uh, uh, well, all these aspects are very important because uh, they give Haiti the opportunity to rise uh, from the ruins, and it is also an opportunity for private companies to be able to carry out uh, uh, profitable investments. Uh, this is, in other words, uh, an entrepreneurial uh, opportunity for the private sector, and uh, it's uh, an important thing for uh, foreign investment because this is a country that is uh, going through its reconstruction. I think that companies need to go to Haiti, but they need to think, of course, about profitability. That's always an important factor. But they also have to think about corporate social responsibility. And this corporate social responsibility needs to be even further underscored in Haiti's uh, case. In the case of this social responsibility, uh, the main topic in Haiti would have to do with the environment. Uh, Haiti, especially we compare Haiti to the Dominican Republic, you know they're on the same island. Uh, uh, well, Haiti seems to be a devastated country from the uh, environment point of view. There is a deforestation uh, uh, process uh, which is eroding uh, the soil of Haiti, and one can see this. Uh, uh, when uh, hurricanes uh, hit uh, Haiti, then there are floods uh, because the topsoil in Haiti has been uh, has become barren in Haiti. So even slight rain becomes a catastrophic flood. So uh, the uh, we need to. Uh, uh, do a reforestation process there, and we need to restore the topsoil, we need to restore uh, the soil of Haiti, and all this uh, will require a great deal of participation on the part of the corporate social projects. Uh, of course, there are other practices that have to do uh, with the uh, use of uh, wood uh, or for uh, turning uh, wood into a uh, coal. Uh, we are going to need uh, to establish and new practices for cooking food so that people there will not have to resort uh, to the wood that they get from the forest because this is what they've been doing for a long time. And uh, this is why felling all these trees. Uh, so the new companies that come into Haiti have to keep in mind that they need to cooperate in projects of uh, such a uh, project. Uh, was saying and some of uh, what he's uh, describe uh, some exits uh, to the situation, especially speaking of the env environmental situation. Environmental. Thank you, Mr. President. Gracias. Uh, um, I think, uh, as we said, uh, there are times in Haiti we are protecting uh, the cities against uh, the flood, but uh, the water uh, shed, the head of the watershed, is in the hill. That means if we don't refer. Uh, uh, plant trees in the top of the mountains, uh, it, uh, it's a waste of time, waste uh, of uh, resources. Like, uh, you know, the place uh, I am working mainly, it's in a locality called Fondroy. And uh, whenever it rains, uh, Leogan, which is uh, the closest city from our place, there is a flood in Leogan. Why that? It is because uh, Fondroy is in the top of the mountain. The people cut a lot of trees and uh, that uh, a, uh, a, there is a flood in, Leo, in Leogan. But that means uh, the people who are cutting uh, trees, uh, we, don't, we cannot ask them just stop to plant trees. We have to address their needs. Uh, we have to make sure that they have access uh, to water, to basic education, to health care, uh, to road, to all of the basic social uh, needs. Otherwise, uh, a, uh, uh, we are washing our hands. And um, a, as, I think, as I said uh, earlier, uh, the main approach is uh, how we can strengthen the government itself. Uh, like a lot of people are uh, criticizing the government, like uh, the government is corrupted, but how to strengthen the government to get good results. And also, as we said earlier, we have three main entities 
working together, but they are isolated from each other. We have the international NGOs, we have the local organizations, we have the government. They are not working together. That's why we think uh, we need to find a bridge. Probably IDB can help us not only to finance the costs of bringing together the local organizations, the international NGOs, and the government to sit down together around the table to see how best we can rebuild the country together. And also we know that uh, we have a lot of international organizations, a lot of uh, countries which want to help. Uh, IDB might be the best channel, you know, to help us dealing with that. Quisiera preguntarle ahora al eh, presidente del Banco Interamericano. I would like uh, to uh, ask uh, the president of the IDB, Mr. Moreno, about a point that uh, Mr. Mendoza pointed out, which is exactly the speed uh, to unblock uh, those uh, sources so that these uh, resources can reach Haiti as soon as possible. But there is that international bureaucracy, and there are delays because of this bureaucracy. So what can the IDB do in order to release these funds so that you can start reconstruction in Haiti as soon as possible. No doubt, international cooperation has uh, been very good, uh, and yet there is a, a great deal of things that can still be done in order to improve the delivery of aid to Haiti. The fact that it is being done uh, around one a main entity, we can put some order into the sequence uh, that is ruling over the projects. Uh, what have we learned at the IDB? Basically, we need a very strong team on site. Uh, approximately three years ago, we decided to significantly increase uh, the uh, number of uh, professionals that the bank had in Haiti. Why? Because uh, we had approved credits uh, uh, in the amount of $50 million, to just give you a, a figure, and, and uh, the disbursements were not being carried out. Uh, and uh, there were problems, uh, there were problems within the Haitian government uh, uh, in terms of their uh, um, executing uh, units in order to be able to bring these monies uh, to Haiti. So uh, we, were, we worked on that problem and we began to do our disbursements of more than $70 million uh, and uh, these funds were being allotted uh, to uh, water projects, uh, power projects, uh, avoiding floods uh, and also uh, they were being destined uh, to uh, the uh, general budget of Haiti, in other words resources so that uh, the the government can pay for the police force, uh, teachers, etc., basic services uh, that any country needs. Uh, so we do indeed need a better co coordination of the international community. And basically, this is what we're trying to achieve through this new structure, because uh, uh, through this uh, multi-donor fund uh, is a sort of uh, DNA uh, where we can identify the projects and the disbursements will be produced immediately so that the projects can be executed as uh, quickly as possible. I think that uh, this is a gist of uh, the problem. Uh, the best uh, social policy is to generate jobs. That's really the gist of everything, because this will lead uh, to sustainable uh, development of the private sector. We uh, had the honor to participate in a meeting with Coca-Cola, and uh, we had a, a meeting in Davos. Uh, I met with the president of Coca-Cola. We launched uh, a, a project in Haiti uh, with a great deal of uh, vigor by Coca-Cola using the marketing power that a company such as Coca-Cola has uh, so that uh, they can go uh, from the uh, orchard to the final consumer and uh, um, we can uh, take a shortcut so that uh, resources are not wasted on intermediaries, etc. And uh, thus uh, we generate uh, an added uh, demand which is very significant. Something that Lorenzo says I thought was very important. Uh, uh, Haiti has the best trade agreement with the United States. Uh, today, and uh, it would be wonderful if the whole world could have the best trade agreement with Haiti. Why? So that we can uh, transfer production to Haiti. I was talking to President Fernandez one day, and he brought up an idea which uh, has uh, been going around in my mind. I was thinking about a value chain that um, sort of comes to an end in Puerto Rico, uh, but uh, we can increase the links in this chain, and uh, I think this is an important idea that we should develop by President Fernandez. 
Fernandez was talking about some of these funds uh, which uh, have tax advantages in terms of deposits in the United States. So the question is, uh, what are the most important areas in the private sector? No doubt the agricultural area. This is a country where 60 percent of the population is a rural population. Uh, uh, there are some land problems, uh, but uh, we can work on this. Uh, we can plant uh, fruits, uh, coffee. Um, we can create orchards, and all this can have um, value added. Uh, then we can work on textiles and garments, uh, garment industries. Uh, so uh, the United States is, is trying to implement uh, what we call preferences in terms uh, of uh, tariffs uh, for uh, products going into the United States, these tariffs are at zero, but uh, if this is done by other countries as well, reduced tariffs, then Haiti uh, uh, could uh, have access to all these markets, especially the markets of the United States. We're looking into companies that could generate uh, between 20 or 25,000 employments, and then we need to work on the tourist area. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, when uh, one moves over to the Dominican Republic, one can see the tourist development that has taken place in the Dominican Republic. It is incredible and natural um, destination of uh, many tourists. Uh, uh, well, they could go to Haiti because Haiti would be cheaper and uh, uh, tourist operators could work uh, as they're working in Dominican Republic. They can also work with Haiti. And uh, all this would generate sustainable development. Uh, we must uh, uh, set targets in terms of how many jobs we need uh, to uh, generate and only jobs will really help Haiti because, uh, well, perhaps the um, international community sending a, a lot of resources and um, institutions such as Foncosa, they're sending um, resources. Uh, also, uh, Haitians are sending, uh, Haitians who live outside of Haiti are also sending resources. All these are very important factors of the economy, but we need to generate jobs anyway because that will make the development sustainable. Uh, Mr. Moreno asked uh, Mr. David John Howard Thompson the following. The best commercial agreement with the United States. But the main uh, and the most interesting objective would be that the whole world will have the same type of agreement with Haiti. What are your thoughts about uh, that reflection of Mr. Moreno? Uh, the translation? Again, I'm sorry, I didn't get what you were saying. Uh, I was saying that Mr. Moreno has pointed out something very interesting. Uh, he was saying that Haiti has got the best commercial agreement with the world, um, excuse me, with the United States, right. but it would be so wonderful and great if the whole world would have the best uh, commercial agreement with Haiti. What would be your comments about uh, what Mr. Wadi pointed out? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I mean, off the cuff, I would say, yeah. You're the Barbados would like that too. <laughs> um, but we're talking about Haiti, and the circumstances uh, are a lot different. Um, I think at the heart of the issue, though, which is something that um, I'm not sure we've been able to solve, is which comes first. The, the, what is the platform that is going to support private sector uh, involvement and investment and that kind of, of thing? And does Haiti currently have in place the structures, the administrative and other structures that can effectively facilitate the new private sector investment? Yes. Or are we still in the disaster phase? And that's why I'm saying that from our point of view in CARICOM, we feel that there have to be three phases, the, the disaster recovery phase, and that has to have, a, in a sense, a finite end so that the economy can start then to perform again, the government can start to raise revenue and do the things that normal administrations have uh, to do as part of the administrative structure and to put in place the, the transparency uh, to facilitate the new initiatives in that post-catastrophe uh, phase. Now, when does that phase start? And we have to find a way to 
get that right so that private sector investment, I mean the initiatives that have been talked about today are very important, but many of them flow from the disaster itself. Mm -hmm. What we need to, to try to do is get Haiti to the stage where it has a settled economic environment, where it can naturally attract investment, and where the physical and other development that is taking place is consistent with the desires of the people who live in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a, a very difficult um, task. I don't think we've spent enough, really, time, even in all of our discussion, on how we can achieve that. And I think we're searching to try and get there, but we must put that at the forefront of the agenda so that, as I said, once again, Haiti can play its critical role uh, as a normal nation functioning outside of that uh, catastrophe environment. Señor Reyes, desde el sector privado, ¿cómo ven esa posibilidad? Mr. Reyes, from the private sector, how do you see the possibility of being able to uh, participate uh, in a more precise way? Are there administrative structures or are we still in the post-disaster stage? What does the private sector think about this? I'm going to answer your question, but I also want to make a couple of comments uh, because I think you're giving precise uh, examples uh, about some of the concerns uh, that have been put forward here in the panel. Uh, for instance, a sense of urgency, speed, uh, and certainly about uh, the reforestation process. Uh, the idea uh, of being able to help 25,000 families and uh, uh, the basic idea um, to be able to help them through a mango industry, we have to start uh, planting the trees in a sustainable way, and we need to be more friendly uh, towards the environment by good usage of water, etc. This uh, not only has a multiplying effect on employment, but also it also has a great effect on forests uh, and the adequate use of natural Haitian resources. Uh, a mango, for instance, is a natural resource in Haiti. Nonetheless, uh, the the, there's an enormous amount of mangoes that get lost on the way as the president, as president uh, Luis was saying about this process. Uh, uh, this is one of the things. And then uh, we have a sense of urgency that was mentioned here. One of the most visible parts of the project, uh, 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 the Haiti Hope, and Luis Alberto was talking about this as well, is the creation of a product. A product that is being sold, it is being sold today in the United States. Uh, we are talking about uh, mango, a light, uh, this is a refreshing juice, and uh, all of the profits from the sales of this mango juice uh, will be put into the project of rebuilding Haiti. All of the profits will be put into that project. So what I want to emphasize in terms of the sense of urgency is that from the moment we started to talk about this, uh, which is exactly seven weeks ago, uh, uh, and if we carry this forward uh, to this moment when this is actually being implemented, well, it's taken seven weeks for this to happen. So there is uh, the possibility of uh, uh, carrying forward all of these actions. I think we can achieve this. So uh, we work together, and uh, I think we can all contribute uh, to improving the situation in Haiti. So now I'm going to answer your question. Yes, there are many barriers. Uh, they exist and they will always exist, but uh, they're all surmountable. If we join efforts, we will all be able to get over the barriers. Uh, Mr. Mendoza, I would like to hear your opinion uh, from Polar. What do you think about Haiti? From the Polar point of view, uh, we have been involved uh, in certain states, so uh, we have been sending tons and tons of uh, food. Uh, we have agreements with Caritas, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, are helping with uh, child nutrition. Uh, this is an area where we are going to be uh, aiding Haiti. and. Um, 
Uh, the investment part, well, this has to do with, uh, this is an agricultural country, and as Luis Alberto was saying, in terms of tariffs, uh, which is a very important thing in Latin America, one thing is to talk about North America and then South America. So how can we make sure that not only where there'll be a rule of law, but a production such that uh, uh, companies will really see in Haiti a clear investment opportunity. I want to say that the extension part in Haiti is not going to come to an end in the short term. It's, Haiti has a huge uh, deep uh, crisis, and it does require aid, assistance. And uh, this is why we have multilateral uh, NGOs or uh, um, NGOs for social development, uh, for development, for investment, all this comes from the private sector, but the private sector needs to understand uh, that the profits associated to Haiti cannot be seen from the same perspective as uh, one could apply to other economies. Uh, uh, then once again, we have to ask uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, I think long-term investments in Haiti will require a uh, content of uh, corporate responsibility uh, by the private sector. I do not see any other way uh, for the private sector to become involved in Haiti if it is not done through long-term investments. It's an altruistic effort. It might sound a little hard to understand, but it is impossible uh, to do things if we don't see this. Uh, Africa has been successful in many countries because of uh, the uh, aid uh, that has been given to Africa, but because projects have been set up uh, thinking about very long-term returns. Uh, I think uh, non-governmental NGOs and the private sector can expedite uh, the time frames uh, uh, in Haiti for many years, and this has nothing to do with the uh, earthquake, but uh, I want to say that governments have their own protocol, they have their voters and their people and their realities, their own realities in Latin America, and because of this they have uh, restricted budgets and they cannot always be as solidary as they would like to be, whether they do this through multilateral organizations or other organizations. But companies have a different uh, uh, perspective. We can take risks because uh, somewhat we have been significantly benefited uh, thanks to the companies that we manage. Uh, so uh, the topic of returns in Haiti, we look at the returns from an orthodox point of view. Well, this is not going to happen. We need to think very long term. We, think, we must think about social responsibility investments. Uh, and hopefully the private industry will uh, summon exactly executives and uh, people that are transparent, uh, that have an impeccable reputation, and that they uh, will be really committed in allotting uh, resources to Haiti through whatever mechanism uh, Haiti decides to use, uh, uh, because of course they have to make sure they understand what priorities they have. Uh, the private uh, uh, enterprises uh, have uh, a capacity to produce results, and these results could be very beneficial to Haiti. We would like to open up a possibility for the participants in this forum to ask questions to the uh, panel members. Alicia Barcenas, uh, the uh, ECLA Executive Secretary, I wanted to make a couple of comments, and one is uh, addressed uh, to uh, President Leonel Fernandez. Uh, one of the exercises that we did with Dominican Republic was called Dominican Republic 2030. And I do not know, Mr. President, if you would think it would be timely uh, to uh, do an exercise of this nature for Haiti. How? He, uh, here, there was an earthquake which accumulated uh, six times the cost of what had happened in 2004, and we participated in an assessment uh, with the IDB and the like to like uh, cost. In other words, if we were to rebuild everything uh, just as they were before the earthquake, uh, the international community said, well, well, we, they weren't pursuing like to like. They wanted to do something different, and they thought uh, $12,500 million, uh, a billion dollars uh, was estimated. This is a way to do things differently than the international community offered 5000 
uh, 5 billion for the short term. Uh, but what is lacking here is a long term plan, which would allow us to place all the pieces of the puzzle in the right place and ask ourselves oh, who's going to benefit from this in IT? The tourist sector, the industrial sector? What is the best productive strategy that will allow the whole country to be reconstructed as of or starting with uh, Port au Prince? Uh, because uh, the earthquake really hit Port-au-Prince uh, very, very um, hard. Uh, and if this is going to trigger development for the country, are we going to think about an, uh, a new land use plan? And I'm not talking about dominance by the state. Uh, we're not talking about this kind of dilemmas at the moment. Uh, but it is important to say that uh, something else is lacking in Haiti, and that is we think we must think uh, about uh, the social tissue of Haiti so that we can implement the bottom-up approach. At ECLA, we have seen that one thing that is lacking in Haiti is very simple. That is a population census. We need to do a survey of households uh, to see where people are located, how many people uh, there are in each household. Uh, and we have thought that this is a very urgent project. Uh, uh, and the, the best institution in Haiti today is the Statistics Institute with which we work. So we need to start to rebuild uh, institutions in Haiti. Some institutions are already there, so we can start with them. And one of the best institutions that are already there is the Statistics Institution. So my suggestion is to do a census. Uh, uh, we can do a survey of households. We can do this with the IDB, and we could apply a 2030 plan. Thank you very much. Mr. President, would you like uh, to make a comment on this proposal? Yes, of course. Um, but first of all, I would like to congratulate Alicia for making this recommendation. And I have to say that with our Minister of Economics, uh, who is sitting next to you, we had already talked about this topic. In our experience uh, at the Dominican Republic and because of the financial global crisis, we tackle this process in two ways. Uh, first of all, we need uh, to think about democratic uh, governance and vis-a-vis -vis the threat uh, for a small economy by uh, a financial crisis. So we decided to summon an international uh, summit, uh, and we called it the Summit of National Unity vis-a-vis -vis the Global Economic Crisis. And in that summit, uh, we summoned uh, the life uh, uh, forces of society, and uh, we agreed about the main topics that we needed to tackle in order to abate uh, or mitigate uh, the impact of uh, such catastrophes. Uh, so we started to think long term, and we have designed uh, jointly with uh, ECLA uh, and uh, with the proposal for Dominican Republic, the 2030 proposal, we started to think about structural, economic, social, political, scientific, technological, cultural projects uh, for the Dominican Republic in the next 30 years. And I think uh, the uh, perspective uh, that we have in front of us is to look into the future, to have foresight. Uh, and this foresight will uh, help us define what kind of uh, country we want to create. I think uh, Haiti needs this foresight, this vision towards the future, so that they can determine which are the priority areas that need to be developed and what are the difficulties that may arise in trying to achieve this project. And here I want to uh, say something in parenthesis so that you can understand what I'm saying better. Perhaps one might say we are going to say that Haiti is a country that needs uh, agricultural uh, development. It needs to develop its agricultural sector. This is a very good statement, but why isn't this happening? Well, it's not happening because uh, the, 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 the devil is in the details, and we're not uh, paying enough attention to this. Uh, so uh, we, let's uh, think that we're going to plant rice. Uh, for instance, in the Dominican Republic, the rice that we consume is planted by Haitians, but Haitians import all of the rice they consume. Why? Because there is a distortion world trade problem. They import, Haiti imports subsidized rice, and this subsidized rice is cheaper than the rice that the Haitians can produce themselves. So this is not lack of will. 
It's because of the world trade distortion, and because this world trade distortion, Haiti cannot produce uh, their own uh, rice. And just think, it's an agricultural uh, country, and yet they import 90% of the food that they consume. How can, how can you understand this? Uh, so we need to design a plan. We need to understand what the difficulties are, the problems that need, need to be overcome. Some are internal, some are external uh, to the development problems of the country. So briefly, I would like to revisit uh, an idea that was put forward by President Moreno, which I think is essential for the short and middle term as a First Minister was saying uh, the Haitian problem needs to be seen in stages, phases. Uh, the first one is humanitarian aid, uh, first aid. So let's uh, call this a uh, first aid phase uh, uh, to be able to cover the devastation that came after the catastrophe. Then there is a second stage uh, which should come within a year, which is basically their uh, basic recovery stage uh, in order to overcome uh, the problems that came about because of the catastrophe here. We need to contemplate the building of housing, they have tents, uh, uh, but uh, we need uh, to make headway into building proper homes. Uh, and uh, then we need to think about the next 10 years, and this is what was talked about in the New York summit, and Alicia is talking beyond 10 years. She's talking about 2030. Now, looking at things from this perspective, I would like to talk about the, the uh, company roles. Uh, how can we involve all the companies uh, uh, how do we create the proper business environment in Haiti? I want to revisit something that President Moreno said, and that is something that has to do with the experience of the U.S. with Puerto Rico. They created a, a 936 project on the basis of uh, tax policies in the United States. This was very simple. Uh, U.S. companies that would invest in Puerto Rico if they were uh, repatriating their benefits or profits to the United States, uh, they would be exempt uh, on uh, the payments they had to make uh, for their income tax. Uh, uh, so we're talking about foreign investment uh, that would go to Puerto Rico. Profits would be exempt uh, uh, from paying taxes in the United States, but they went one step beyond. Uh, they actually created a mechanism which is called uh, uh, twin plans. Uh, so the uh, group in Puerto Rico would set up another plant in the Dominican Republic, and then this plant would also be exempt from paying taxes. So if you look at the relationship between Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, we're all in the same zone. There is a difference in terms of their economic model, in terms of the added value that is uh, produced in the global value chain. Puerto Rico is uh, within the sphere of high technology. We're talking about pharmaceutical industry. We're talking about IT. We're talking about biotechnology, uh, robotics, etc. Dominican Republic has been in a strong uh, development phase in terms of textiles, shoes, plastics, medical equipment, etc. Haiti has tried to go into a phase of light industry. Uh, and uh, the Dominican Republic uh, is not doing this. It's not competitive enough uh, because uh, uh, labor costs have increased, and this is why this investment is being done in Haiti. So the idea would be the following. Why not set up uh, tax incentives? Uh, for instance, Colombian companies could go and invest in Haiti. Uh, Venezuelan companies could go to Haiti for a given time, and they would be exempted from paying income tax in terms of the repatriated uh, uh, profits. Uh, this would be a great incentive. Uh, now, beginning with the United States, uh, well, they already have experience with Puerto Rico because they did this with uh, Puerto Rico, but donor countries such as Canada and France uh, uh, which for linguistic, cultural, and historical reasons have a very close link with Haiti, why not uh, ask uh, that uh, they do this uh, incentive with Haiti so that companies from these countries could eventually become investors in Haiti? Because I think uh, this is a type of investment that is going to be needed short and medium term, but it needs uh, uh, institutional uh, strengthening in addition to tax um, 
incentives. This could bring about an improvement in the society and they can become better integrated to the global chain value in terms of the services. We would like to thank all our panel members. This has been a wonderful forum. It is an honor to have you all here. I would like to ask Father Sip to give us a message. I representatives of uh, governments of the region and at the same time you have two very high top executives of the uh, private sector, of course, President Moreno. What would be your final message from Haiti? Father. Oh, sorry, I did not realize that. <laughs> I'm really thankful to each one of you for your concern about uh, the building of Haiti. As uh, we said it, we need to do that in dialogue with the grassroots local organizations. We cannot do the rebuilding of, of Haiti without the people who are concerned. And also we need to uh, look at uh, uh, this situation as an investment opportunities for the investors. And I'm very glad uh, that some of you have uh, uh, pointed that out. But now also we need a, a lot of uh, teachers, especially for my university the University of Fondroy. We need your knowledge because you have been dealing uh, with uh, uh, disaster situation uh, more than uh, Haiti and you have uh, more technological resources. We need uh, to develop a kind of partnership uh, at this uh, level. But uh, thank you very much uh, for your concern and we hope you can come to visit with us in Haiti as soon as possible. Thank you very much, sir, and the best, the best luck for Haiti. Gracias a todos de veras y bueno. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. So uh, we have been sending tons and tons of uh, food. Uh, we have agreements with Caritas, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, are helping with uh, child nutrition. Uh, this is an area where we are going to be uh, aiding Haiti. And um, uh, the investment part, well, this has to do with uh, this is an agricultural country. And as Luis Alberto was saying, in terms of tariffs, uh, which is a very important thing in Latin America, one thing is to talk about North America and then South America. So how can we make sure that not only where there'll be a rule of law, but a production such that uh, companies will really see in Haiti a clear investment opportunity. I want to say that the extent part in Haiti is not going to come to an end in the short term. It's, Haiti has a huge uh, deep uh, crisis, and it does require aid, assistance. And uh, this is why we have multilateral uh, NGOs or uh, um, NGOs for social development, uh, for development, for investment, all this comes from the private sector, but the private sector needs to understand uh, that the profits associated to Haiti cannot be seen from the same perspective as uh, one could apply to other economies. Uh, uh, then once again, we have to ask uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, I think long-term investments in Haiti will require a uh, content of uh, corporate responsibility uh, by the private sector. I do not see any other way uh, for the private sector to become involved in Haiti if it is not done through long-term investments. It's an altruistic effort. It might sound a little hard to understand, but it is impossible uh, to do things if we don't see this. Uh, Africa has been successful in many countries because of uh, the uh, 
aid uh, that has been given to Africa, but because projects have been set up, but thinking about very long-term returns. Uh, I think uh, non-governmental NGOs and the private sector can expedite uh, the time frames uh, uh, in Haiti for many years, and this has nothing to do with the uh, earthquake, but uh, I want to say that governments have their own protocol, they have their voters and their people and their realities their own realities in Latin America. And because of this, they have uh, restricted budgets, and they cannot always be as solidary as they would like to be, whether they do this through multilateral organizations or other organizations. But companies have a different uh, uh, perspective. We can take risks, because uh, somewhat we have been significantly benefited uh, thanks to the companies that we manage. Uh, so uh, the topic of returns in Haiti, we look at the returns from an orthodox point of view. Well, this is not going to happen. We need to think very long term. We, think, we must think about social responsibility investments. Uh, and hopefully, the private industry will uh, summon executives and uh, people that are transparent, uh, that have an impeccable reputation, and that they uh, will be really committed in allotting uh, resources to Haiti through whatever mechanism uh, Haiti decides to use, uh, uh, because, of course, they have to make sure they understand what priorities they have. Uh, the private uh, uh, enterprises uh, have uh, a capacity to produce results, and these results could be very beneficial to Haiti. We would like to open up a possibility for the participants in this forum to ask questions to the uh, panel members. Alicia Barcenas, uh, the uh, ECLA Executive Secretary, wanted to make a couple of comments, and one is uh, addressed uh, to uh, President Leonel Fernandez. Uh, one of the exercises that we did with Dominican Republic was called Dominican Republic 2030. And I do not know, Mr. President, if you would think it would be timely uh, to uh, do an exercise of this nature for Haiti. How? Uh, here, there was an earthquake which accumulated uh, six times the cost of what had happened in 2004, and we participated in an assessment uh, with the IDB and the like to like uh, cost. In other words, if we were to rebuild everything uh, just as they were before the earthquake, uh, the international community said, well, well, we, they weren't pursuing like to like. They wanted to do something different, and they thought uh, $12,500 million, uh, a billion dollars uh, was estimated. This is a way to do things differently than the international community offered 5000 uh, five billion for the short term. Uh, but what is lacking here is a long-term plan, which would allow us to place all the pieces of the puzzle in the right place and ask ourselves, uh, who's going to benefit from this in IT? The tourist sector, the industrial sector? What is the best productive strategy that will allow the whole country to be reconstructed as of, uh, starting with uh, Port-au-Prince? Uh, because uh, the earthquake really hit Port-au-Prince uh, very, very um, hard. Uh, and if this is going to trigger development for the country, are we going to think about an, uh, a new land use plan? And I'm not talking about dominance by the state. Uh, we're not talking about this kind of dilemmas at the moment. Uh, but it is important to say that uh, something else is lacking in Haiti, and that is we think we must think uh, about uh, the social tissue of Haiti so that we can implement the bottom-up approach. At ECLA, we have seen that one thing that is lacking in Haiti is very simple. That is a population census. We need to do a survey of households uh, to see where people are located, how many people uh, there are in each household. Uh, and we have thought that this is a very urgent project. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the best institution in Haiti today is the Statistics Institute with which we work. So we need to start to rebuild uh, institutions in Haiti. Some institutions are already there, so we can start with them. And one of the best institutions that are already there is the Statistics Institution. So my suggestion is to do a census. Uh, uh, we can do a survey of households. We can do this with the IDB, and we could apply 
by a 2030 plan. Thank you very much. Mr. President, would you like uh, to make a comment on this proposal? Yes, of course. Um, but first of all, I would like to congratulate Alicia for making this recommendation. And I have to say that with our Minister of Economics, uh, who is sitting next to you, we had already talked about this topic. In our experience uh, at the Dominican Republic, and because of the financial global crisis, we tackle this process in two ways. Uh, first of all, we need uh, to think about democratic uh, governance and vis-a-vis -vis the threat uh, for a small economy by a, a financial crisis. So we decided to summon an international uh, summit, uh, and we called it the Summit of National Unity vis-a-vis -vis the Global Economic Crisis. And in that summit, uh, we summoned uh, the life uh, uh, forces of society, and uh, we agreed about the main topics that we needed to tackle in order to abate uh, or mitigate uh, the impact of uh, such catastrophes. Uh, so we started to think long term, and we have designed uh, jointly with uh, ECLA uh, and uh, with the proposal for Dominican Republic, the 2030 proposal, we started to think about structural, economic, social, political, scientific, technological, cultural projects uh, for the Dominican Republic in the next 30 years. And I think uh, the uh, perspective uh, that we have in front of us is to look into the future, to have foresight. Uh, and this foresight will uh, help us define what kind of uh, country we want to create. I think uh, Haiti needs this foresight, this vision towards the future, so that they can determine which are the priority areas that need to be developed and what are the difficulties that may arise in trying to achieve this project. And here I want to uh, say something in parenthesis so that you can understand what I'm saying better. Perhaps one might say we are going to say that Haiti is a country that needs uh, agricultural uh, development. It needs to develop its agricultural sector. This is a very good statement, but why isn't this happening? Well, it's not happening because uh, the, 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 the devil is in the details and we're not uh, paying enough attention to this. Uh, so uh, we, let's uh, think that we're going to plant rice uh, for instance, in the Dominican Republic, the rice that we consume is planted by Haitians, but Haitians import all of the rice they consume. Why? Because there is a distortion world trade problem. They import, Haiti imports subsidized rice, and this subsidized rice is cheaper than the rice that the Haitians can produce themselves. So this is not lack of will. It's because of the world trade distortion, and because this world trade distortion, Haiti cannot produce uh, their own uh, rice. And just think, it's an agricultural uh, country, and yet they import 90% of the food that they consume. How can, how can you understand this? Uh, so we need to design a plan. We need to understand what the difficulties are, the problems that need, need to be overcome. Some are internal, some are external uh, to the development problems of the country. So briefly, I would like to revisit uh, an idea that was put forward by President Moreno, which I think is essential for the short and middle term as a first minister was saying uh, the Haitian problem needs to be seen in stages, phases. Uh, the first one is humanitarian aid, uh, first aids. Let's uh, call this a uh, first aid phase uh, uh, to be able to cover the devastation that came after the catastrophe. Then there is a second stage uh, which should come within a year, which is basically their uh, basic recovery stage uh, in order to overcome uh, the problems that came about because of the catastrophe here. We need to contemplate the building of housing, they have tents, uh, uh, but uh, we need uh, to make headway into building proper homes. Uh, and uh, then we need to think about the next 10 years, and this is what was talked about in the New York summit, and Alicia is talking beyond 10 years. She's talking about 2030. Now, looking at things from this perspective, I would like to talk about the, the uh, company roles. Uh, how can we involve all the companies uh, uh, how do we create the proper 
business environment in Haiti. I want to revisit something that President Moreno said, and that is something that has to do with the experience of the U.S. with Puerto Rico. They created a 936 project on the basis of tax policies in the United States. This was very simple. U.S. companies that would invest in Puerto Rico if they were repatriating their benefits or profits to the United States, they would be exempt uh, on uh, the payments they had to make uh, for their income tax. Uh, uh, so we're talking about foreign investment uh, that would go to Puerto Rico. Profits would be exempt uh, from paying taxes in the United States, but they went one step beyond. Uh, they actually created a mechanism which is called uh, uh, twin plans. Uh, so the uh, group uh, in Puerto Rico would set up another plant in the Dominican Republic, and then this plant would also be exempt from paying taxes. So if you look at the relationship between Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, we're all in the same zone. There is a difference in terms of their economic model, in terms of the added value that is uh, produced in the global value chain. Puerto Rico is uh, within the sphere of high technology. We're talking about pharmaceutical industry. We're talking about IT. We're talking about biotechnology, uh, robotics, etc. Dominican Republic has been in a strong uh, development phase in terms of textiles, shoes, plastics, medical equipment, etc. Haiti has tried to go into a phase of light industry. Uh, and uh, the Dominican Republic uh, is not doing this. It's not competitive enough uh, because uh, uh, labor costs have increased, and this is why this investment is being done in Haiti. So the idea would be the following. Why not set up uh, tax incentives? Uh, for instance, Colombian companies could go and invest in Haiti. Uh, Venezuelan companies could go to Haiti for a given time, and they would be exempted from paying income tax in terms of their repatriated uh, uh, profits. Uh, this would be a great incentive. Uh, now, beginning with the United States, uh, well, they already have experience with Puerto Rico because they did this with uh, Puerto Rico, but donor countries such as Canada and France uh, uh, which for linguistic, cultural, and historical reasons have a very close link with Haiti, why not uh, ask uh, that uh, they do this uh, incentive with Haiti so that companies from these countries could eventually become investors in Haiti? Because I think uh, this is the type of investment that is going to be needed short and medium term, but it needs uh, uh, institutional uh, strengthening in addition to tax um, incentives. This could bring about an improvement in the society and they can become better integrated to the global chain value in terms of the services. We would like to thank all our panel members. This has been a wonderful forum. It is an honor to have you all here. I would like to ask Father Sip to give us a message. I representatives of uh, governments of the region and at the same time you have two very high top executives of the uh, private sector, of course, President Moreno. What would be your final message from Haiti? Father. Oh, sorry, I did not realize that. <laughs> I'm really thankful to each one of you for your concern about uh, the building of Haiti. As uh, we said, it, we need to do that in dialogue with the grassroots local organizations. We cannot do the rebuilding of, of Haiti without the people who are concerned. And also we need to uh, look at uh, uh, this situation as an investment opportunities for the investors. And I'm very glad uh, that some of you have uh, uh, pointed that out. But now also we need a, a lot of uh, teachers, especially for my university the University of Fondroi. We need your knowledge because you have been dealing uh, with uh, uh, disaster situation uh, more than uh, Haiti and you have uh, more technological resources. We need uh, to develop a kind of partnership uh, at this uh, level. But uh, thank you very much uh, for your concern and we hope you can come to visit with us in Haiti as soon as possible. Thank you very much, sir, and the best, the best luck for Haiti. Gracias a todos de veras y bueno. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon.